Hey everybody, this is Pastor Brandon with our next episode of The Fandom Pastor. So, uh, if you have been with us before, uh, welcome back. If this is your first time, we're well, glad you can make it. If you would, do me a big favor and share this uh, video out. Give me a like, give me a comment, something like that. Let me know that you're kind of enjoying these. The entire purpose of The Fandom Pastor is to show that uh, God is present in everything, including our fandoms. So the fandoms are things like uh, uh, movies and books and, and what have you that really are part of a, a larger universe. Uh, look at Harry Potter, Star Wars, comic books, that type of thing. So we are in our series of cult films. Uh, this is going to be the last, kind of sort of the last episode for the cult films. Our next one is kind of sort of a cult film, but it's also very well known and was actually the highest, highest grossing film of its year. So I'm not sure we could necessarily say it's a cult film. It was uh, not one that's seen very much anymore, but there are some definitely some big fans. So a cult film, though, is one that usually didn't do so well when it first came out, uh, think of A Christmas Story, an absolute beloved Christmas movie, but when it came out, it did very, very poorly. Uh, but now uh, we know that there is such a fandom base of people that absolutely love the film that we can say it's almost not a cult film anymore. It's just a well-respected film. So uh, again, uh, cult films are just usually fun ones. Uh, and so this one is one that I really, really enjoyed as a kid. As you would have seen by the front picture, uh, the intro here, you'll know that this film is called UHF. Uh, it had a scene that was used as the teaser trailer for Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It was a great film. Um, the trailer is linked below, and uh, it's just a... It's an enjoyable film. It's something to just enjoy, not to think about. If you like the, the music of Weird Al Yankovic, um, check it out. You will enjoy it. It's that same type of humor. It's not an intelligent film, okay? I'm not going to say that. It's a film that is stupid, uh, but you can sit back and laugh. I, I still do. Um, when I just watched it again here recently, I still laughed. So judge me however you want. But the, the film is really Weird Al plays this character of George who kind of falls into uh, the responsibility of managing this low budget television station. And what's wild is he just does these stupid shows, um, making fun of talk shows. Uh, there's Gandhi 2, there's Conan the Librarian, um, there's the Wheel of Fish. I mean, all these really stupid shows. But uh, George and the rest of the, the crew there, they, they love them. They have fun. They're just enjoying it. They're being themselves. Uh, they're just kind of being kind of crazy. And it, what happens is everybody starts responding it, to it because it's something different. It's uh, something away from the norm. And they actually end up beating out the, the big boys uh, of television uh, in their small town. And so it's, it's kind of all the hijinks and everything that goes along with it. it it's, it's, again, just a fun and enjoyable film. Uh, FYI, if you're wondering, uh, so I actually pulled it out. The title refers to the ultra-high frequency, UHF, analog television broadcasting band, uh, for which a lot of the low-budget television shows uh, television stations often were placed for the United States. It's definitely a, um, a regional type of thing. Other countries uh, don't use UHF, or at least didn't at the time. Um, and in fact, Weird Al did not want that title. He wanted the title of Vidiot uh, because it was not going to be something that was acceptable uh, in other countries. But Again, very entertaining film, and it's really about them just being themselves. And so I think to Romans 12, 2, which says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You see, George and his friends, 
they really didn't care what the world says. They had fun. They were uh, doing what they did. Uh, they were not conforming to any norm, any standard or anything like that. They were, they were just being themselves. And I think that's something we have to remember when we look through scripture, when we look through the Bible, we'll see time and time again, where people did not, the, the people who made a difference, not only scripturally, but in our world today are the ones that buck the system, the, the ones that aren't doing the normal way of doing things, the ones who are being different. They're conforming not to the world, but to how God made them. And we're each called to do that same thing. We're each called to be who God calls us to be, no matter what the world says. And I think that's really important for us to recognize because that's so important for us to see that God made us unique. God made us different. He didn't say you need to be just like everybody else. Uh, you know, when they say, if you've heard people say, well, when God made that person, he broke the mold. I, I think God does the same thing for us, every one of us, not just one of us or a few of us. All of us are, are completely different. I mean, even look at twins. Genetically, they're the same, and yet personality-wise, they're different people. And we should all look to that. Look to how God created you. Uh, you know, I'm a pastor, and yet I'm not what many would call it more traditional pastor. I'm a little bit different. I decorate my office with uh, comic book stuff and and things like that. I'm just I referenced comic books and fandoms and things like that in my sermons because that's how God made me. And God made each one of us different. I'm still going along with, I'm teaching scripturally, I'm street teaching biblically, and yet I'm making a, a different example, a different view of how we can look at scripture to help people understand it better. So, each one of you, though, has a different approach, a different way of doing things. And as long as it goes along with God's will, do it. Do just that. So, if you would, join me next week, or in two weeks, rather, uh, where it's not really a cult film. It kind of, sort of, maybe is, just because it's more antiquated. Uh, it's an older film. But this was said to have been one of the inspirations for Godzilla, the original, in 1954. So pretty cool. So check that out in just a few weeks, and I hope to see you then. See you later.